Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? It's Sarah, and we are so having a raw dinner. I want to make sure everything's on, that my mic is on. Let me check, because sound is so important. They say you can forgive. No? Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. So they say you can forgive bad lighting, but you can't forgive bad sound. So hold on. I'm so sorry. I forgot to do this. And it's going in. One second. I'll be right there. It's like you guys rang the doorbell and now I'm gonna go answer the door. Okay, we're, we have sound, we have lights, we have action. And I uh, something happened with my Instacart and the greens didn't show up, the arugula and the romaine. And I was like, I'm gonna make a fancy fun salad and it didn't they didn't arrive. So I thought, well, I'm still gonna have raw food. I still have some ingredients. So we're gonna make um, a raw dinner based on some things that I have. And we're celebrating because the Doobie ebook, the holiday, the mostly raw vegan holiday book is out. You can get it. Hi, Cass. We got Cass in Russia in the house. And we're celebrating. I'm having a cocktail of, it's a mocktail, parsley, spinach, kale, romaine. Celery, well, there's my kale and my romaine. <laughs> Celery, cucumber, apple, lemon, carrot, beet, cayenne, and ginger. This is a party. So we are going to, <laughs> hey, Jenna, we were just messaging on the phone. Jenna's in the house. Not only is she in the house now, but she's actually going to be in this house in like a week or something. And we, she said that she would do and ask me anything. So Jenna of Human Design, of the website myhumandesign.com and please know your human design. It, it affects me daily and gives me this heck yes about myself daily and like helps guide what I should do, what I shouldn't do according to authentic little old me. But thank you for saying that, that I look good. I did a little blow dry um, every once in a while after I have not spent much time paying too much attention to my appearance, like when I'm testing recipes for the ebook that's out for eight or nine days straight, and then I'm illustrating around the clock. I don't really pay attention to my appearance that much. So today I was like, I think I'll smooth out my hair a bit. So thank you for noticing. Which, by the way, is a really nice thing to say when someone gives you a compliment. Thank you. I try. Or thank you for noticing. It makes the other person feel really good, too, instead of like, nah, like they don't know what they're talking about. Like, yes, thank you. Especially since I am a words, love language person. <laughs> so Jenna is going to, Jenna looks gorgeous. She eats her greens. Jenna eats so clean. Um... But yes, I eat and drink my greens. So let's toast to the Doobies holiday book. Cass, you saw it, right? And Jenna saw it. Oh my gosh. When you drink your vegetables, it's an instant alkalizer. It's an instant calming of the nerves. I was really excited to say, okay, now what am I going to do? I get to see everybody. It's Saturday night, and I have no arugula. Oh, when I looked in the bag, I was like, ah. Oh. But then I was like, it's okay. So my idea is that I'm going to have the tomato that came is nice. The avocado that came is nice. I do have cauliflower. I have apple. I have celery. I have purple onion. I have this very raw and potent garlic, which I'm going to use because I'm crazy like that. I took a carrot out, a couple carrots, and some lemon, and um, I'm gonna make a creamy dressing for raw vegetables. So, Joey, what'd you see? Oh, you saw the book. So whoever ordered the book can see that it's this really cute, charming um, situation. I highly recommend it. Saturday Night Live with Dara, yes. So yeah, I'm really happy about this video, even though I haven't made it. I think I just wanted to see you guys and I feel really good about the schedule that we've come up with. It was gonna be one o'clock 
on Wednesdays, one o'clock on Sundays, or two Wednesday, two o'clock on Sunday. And I love evening time with you guys. Remember all the nighttime with Dara videos? In fact, there's a possibility that next Saturday night I can dim the lights and we can have a calming uh, talk. But right now, this is dinner time. I wanted to share Go Raw, you guys. I have been using Go Raw sprouted and dehydrated seeds since I went raw in 2006. And they, are, they love me because they send me a huge box of all their seeds and nuts. And this is mixed seeds with sea salt. This is sweet cinnamon snacking seeds. I ate an entire bag of this yesterday, sprouted coconut clusters. But I had the ones that were not chocolate. I haven't, these ones have maca root. And I love this company because... I love to have nuts and seeds as a snack and to keep in my backpack. And like, what if um, you, what if you want nuts and seeds, but you don't have the time to soak them and sprout them and then go dehydrate them? It's like a thing. It's a good thing to do if you're into doing it, which I love. But if you are in a hurry and need to grab something, or if I'm going on a road trip or a plane, I'm not going on a plane trip, but if I hop into a car or on my bicycle and go to the beach, these are coming with. What's yummy in hot cocoa? I miss that. Um, you're in love with the book, Jessica Rose. I'm so glad. I'm in love with it too. Like I was obsessing and kept drawing and drawing and redrawing. And then I just feel like it's just this love. It's like you can't tell until you open it up really how much love is inside. And like my mom's in there with me and the Thanksgiving from many, many years ago and the Thanksgiving I had with Jenna like three or four years ago. Like all of my Thanksgivings ended up in that book. And it's a funny thing when you do like a seasonal raw or mostly raw recipe book and you're like, yeah, this is going to sell for like a month, maybe two. And then it's like people aren't interested and you're putting all this time and resources and energy into it. But you're like, it still needs to be done. Like it needed to be done just because we need these recipes. And I thought, what a disservice to all those years I did Thanksgiving with my mom or all those years of raw food or cooked food, whatever it is. And if you had to watch the YouTube videos, which some of them were transcribed, Lisa watched some, I won't go back and watch them. And then I looked at those recipes from so many years ago and I was like, I would do it a little different now. Like, what was I thinking then? And I made them even better. So it was like reaching into the past bringing it to this island going, all right, what's current now? Like, what do I want now? And even better. And then bringing, making it for future Thanksgivings and holidays. And it could be used throughout the winter, really anytime. Nothing is, uh, you can't use, but it felt like a gift to the future, like a legacy to the future. Like, yes, we can now if I didn't spend three days doing that chai recipe, I wouldn't be able to be enjoying the chai at four o'clock every day the way that I have been. Which, by the way, Jenna, if you're still here, um, yeah, that Thanksgiving was amazing. And the sweet potato thing was based on your suggestion to twice bake the potatoes. So this, the sweet potatoes were steamed, then baked with marshmallows on top of them, vegan marshmallows. So yeah, that Thanksgiving was epic. Um, as they should be. I call them thanks day. I call them leave the turkeys alone day. It's just not necessary. Um, I made the nut loaf. I even froze the nut loaf to see if it would freeze and defrost well. <laughs> Jeff said something funny. He was here and he ate it and he was like, I was like, yeah, I'm freezing some to see if it freezes well. He's like, well, it's going to freeze well. The question is, is it going to defrost well? <laughs> that was funny. So yeah, um, so we can make the potatoes again for sure absolutely so in my human design um jenna told me that eating routinely has something to do with the arrows on your chart and you guys can ask jenna questions when she comes but basically eating in i don't know if it's routine throughout the day with everything or it's just eating jenna but i find when i have my tonic or my tonic coffee in the morning, and my celery juice, then my tonic, then I go for a walk, then I have my smoothie, then I, and it's just like when I have a rhythm of what I eat, it doesn't matter where I am, 
I could be at the beach or I could be home or I could be with someone or not. But the rhythm of eating very similarly throughout the day is really um, helpful to me. Um, I get into a routine. I will eat that same kind of vegan Caesar salad until it's time to move on. <laughs> so I'm cutting up some cauliflower. I do have the cauliflower popcorn in the recipe book. So a similar rhythm to my whole day, not just food, right? I do really well. Like at 10 o'clock, I go for my walk on the beach. I go a certain round and I hit the, the colored rainbow lifeguard stand. And then I go up to creation and get a smoothie and then I walk home. And it's like, and it's like, yes, this is what I do. It feels so good. So I'm going to get a bowl and I'm going to get the bowl from Paris. Jenna was there just recently. And I would love to be in Paris. But in the meantime, I'm really making my life at home quite filled with creativity and making things taste better and look better. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free. Yeah, my whole day, not just food. Like, it's, it's so funny. Like, routine kind of makes me happy. Do you want me to do the cream, the sauce first? How are you guys feeling? How are you feeling about this? <sighs> How are you guys feeling? Oh, we just do the let's do the um, let's do the veggies first because we can always change. Like it could be a creamy curry dressing, it could be um, a creamy Italian dressing, a ranchy kind of dressing. Um, we can like make it up. So let's see. We're just playing because it's Saturday night and we're having fun. I don't know what it is where you are or anybody who's watching this the next day. I hardly ever put tomatoes in with my cauliflower. <laughs> I'm branching out. We're getting crazy on a Saturday night. How is everybody doing? Sutton's here. Shima, Shema. Um, how's everybody doing? And are Saturday nights good? We're going to hear from Cass if enough people are tuning in and staying in on Saturday evenings. And it's not quite night, but it does feel kind of dark out. <sighs> I feel so relaxed and happy at the same time. So that's enough cauliflower. We have the tomato. We're going to do, um, I don't think apple and tomato. If I had, you know, if I had left the tomato out, I would have done apple. And that's just me. You could do it whatever you want. There's really no rules. But I will say that when you are making raw food, cut them small, cut the pieces small. Um, consider the mouthfeel. Consider who you're feeding, because I don't think I'd give this to someone who didn't want onion, raw onion. But if you're by yourself, raw onion and garlic is going to be fun. Keep the vampires away. Congratulations, Desi. I love when you share your news. I love when you guys share what's current, um, good news, anything you need extra hugs about. Um, you just passed your life and health insurance exam for your license. So you're going to be a representative or an agent. Congratulations. Oh, spirit uplifted now that we're together. It really happens every single time. And today... I wanted to show up. Some days I'm like, wow, I committed to showing up. I don't think I have it in me, but then I have it in me. About two hours ago, I had just finished a session with someone and I was drained and then I took a bath. So I had like this hot bath, kind of like lying in bed with a turban on my head. Like, yo, no, I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to make a video. And my daughter was like, get up, play some, um, what did she say? Earth, wind and fire. Get up. And she was getting ready, so I got ready. It was cute. She was motivating. Congratulations, Desi. I love good news. Yeah, hooray. And it's so nice. Thank you, Carla. I totally just did a little smooth, not a big blow dry, just the bangs in the front. And somehow it did something extra. My hair told me it wanted to be a little smoother. And I've been cutting it. This is as short as I'm going to go, but it's been really fun. I love to snip my hair. Anybody else want to say any good news? Good news is the ebook's out and people love it. 
that's good news. But I accomplished something. It feels really good. Um, I cannot wait to get into the studio and paint. Um, I'm going to paint. I got these leather paints. So I'm going to paint some purses and some shoes and a big mural, big canvases. And I'm also going to be writing stories for the doobies, the doobie universe. Thank you, Tessie. I'm glad you look forward to the live videos. And Sydney, it's so nice to hear because you really want to um, connect. Like if you guys are like half this, like it's our connection. So it would be really um, not as much fun if I was sitting here by myself. Oh, thank you. All right, little lips. Do I have lipstick on? I think I must. But I definitely just did a little hair. And I think we like me in Navy. Jessica Rose, it's my pleasure to be your breath of fresh air. I hope you're joining me on Instagram because I'm literally sharing fresh air daily at the beach. Um, at Jenna calls them epic uh, ocean walks. And I think it's a matter of how you relate to whatever nature you're in. So let's say you don't have the ocean, but you do have a park. If you get down on your hands and knees and you notice the blades of grass with a teeny little bug trying to make its way somewhere, or you notice like the, the color of the bark, it's not just brown, there's all these colors. Or if you notice the different shades of green and you notice the details of nature wherever you are, it can be epic. Like it's epic what a butterfly is happening around. You know, so those things, it's your relationship to nature. Oh, Shama, you might be going to Sedona. Thank you for loving my beach medicine. Um, so far, so good. You know, we're not missing the arugula, although chopped arugula in this would have been really fine. But we're going to have carrots. And this is like, it's no big deal, you guys. you got to just chop the raw food. And if you need cooked, if you need a slice of, you know, gluten-free toast or you wanted to have a little rice with it, go ahead. Um... There's not as many rules here anymore, except what you don't want to do, you don't want to eat this carrot. You want to like shave off that indentation because mold can get into that. Can you see it? Yeah, you want to like shave that off. Um, I don't drink alcohol, Tim. Funny you should ask because I'm happy to talk about that. I have had many nights hangovers, yucky feelings. I was always kind of moderate, but I had my share of youthful, uh, you know, have fun, let's have fun. And then when you're having the fun, you just have more fun. <laughs> you don't feel so good the next day. And I 100% do not feel good after I have imbibed any alcohol. Now, I will say, I will say that I wouldn't say I'm never going to have it. Like if there's one special, really special bottle of tequila and I'm sitting with a friend and there's a moment in time that we just need to have that kind of medicine of the juice of a cactus, then maybe. Um, but I won't, you know, in the past, I remember like having anxiety or and having some or having to do something that was going to make me nervous and having some or just social drinking. And I don't need it and it doesn't really do well for me and... Uh, feeling really good. It's just a matter of like, how are you going to be your most clean, clear and bright? And that doesn't contribute to a life that's clean, clear and bright for me. That being said, I'm not in the position where I'm like social and everybody's having a glass of wine and maybe I'd have a little sippy of it. I, I don't know. Like I can't say I wouldn't. If I was in Paris, maybe, but at home and I'm home making food for myself every night and waking up, like I'm painting or drawing into the night every night. And then waking up and not feeling good just doesn't like, make sense if I'm by myself. <laughs> so Arizona, do you know your astrogeography in Arizona? I'm telling you my whole life changed when I moved to my Jupiter rising line. And um, now people are getting my astrogeography course because you can look up for free. You look up your astrogeography and then if you want to understand the planetary lines that you are on, you can get just that one. Light size, as Jenna called it. So, yeah, what a wonderful place. Lots of crystals. What an energy vortex. Okay, you guys can, like, be friends with each other. Anyone who's in the Dara world is under the Dara umbrella is, like, 
a love being, you know. What do you want to know about feng shui? What have you heard and what do you want to know? And what can't you, there's not really, I, I hear you because there's not really, there's books, but there's not really like a school or teaching that I know of that I can recommend, which is why I think I need to teach it. So what form do you want it in? Yeah, I'm bringing you guys together. Oh, you're moving from LA, Shama. That's okay, that's not far. You can hop in the car and go either which way. So what do you want to know about feng shui? Do you, I think the hardest part about it is how to place the bagua, which is the map that tells you. And this is the Western school of Tibetan Buddhist feng shui. It is not the compass school. It's not directional. It's not, um, it basically, there's a map. And Professor Lin Yang developed this school of thought for, the, for us in the West so that we could, he understood that we don't always get to place our homes with a mountain behind, with a river running in the front. We don't always, in fact, usually mostly nobody <laughs> gets to do that. We're in a high rise or we have noisy neighbors or we have shot energy from architecture across the street. Um, or we have, there's only one thing, like everything can be cured in feng shui pretty much. What I would say can be cured is um, something that falls under the realm of bow biology, um, electromagnetic magnetic currents. If they are high near where you are due to electrical um, plants or too much electricity coming to your bedroom, you need to move your bed. And if there is too much running through the whole house, then you would have to move. But other than that, there's architectural obstacles, there's problems, there's definitely bad feng shui, but there's always what is called a cure. And I love to come up with creative cures. It means water and wind, yes. So an easy way to figure out what to put in the different places of the house. Easy videos like my food. So first you have to know, and I wanna ask you, do you, Anna, know, and I love making things easy, do you know how to place the bagua over, let's say, your bedroom? Do you know that your love and partnership area is in the far right and your wealth area is in the far left? Because that is the only tricky part. If your home is a rectangle, and you can learn it from your bedroom, you could just take your room. But if your home has any missing pieces or angles or L shape, it gets a little more complicated. So that's my only thing. Hello, Liz Graham. I love my name, Miss Integrity. Thank you. <laughs> so little, can you do little secret feng shui fixes when you don't live in your own home? Like if you're staying with someone else. I have a bedroom and bathroom to myself. 100%. Oh, yes, you can just do the feng shui in your bedroom and change your life. And it will most likely shift and alter what's going on in the rest of the house. But yes, you can definitely do feng shui for just your room. You can do it for your car. You can do feng shui for your desk, for your bathroom. So I would say, um, yeah, yeah, you can. And you should. I had the teeniest little apartment that I had feng shui and it was one of the happiest places I've ever been. And so you'll start to, when you eat this way, you start to get clean, clear, and bright. You'll be able to feel and talk to houses the way I do. <laughs> Maybe not. I can go into a home and feel like when I walk up to it, I can feel if I should even enter or not. And I've always been that way, really. Let's have a little cocktail of beet juice. So if I did a course, it would have to be a course and I'd have to charge for it. If I just talked about feng shui here and gave you guys some ideas, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like you need to know the Bagua. And that to me takes a Zoom class where I can see your floor plan and then tell you and help you. I think it kind of has to be that way. Oh my gosh, Amazon Princess, we're still in lockdown in Louisiana. What does that mean you're in lockdown? Like, does that mean you can't leave the house unless it's for vital uh, things? No, we're not on lockdown. No, you don't have to, the beach is open. 
they recommend you wear a mask on the beach, but not everybody does. They're breathing in the negative ions. Um, I feel like it warrants a course. Cass, I feel like I'm a confused about the bagua placement as well. The door in my room is not centered. That's okay. It's on the side next to a wall. Okay, so I really think that we need to come up with a way. The world needs a feng shui course. The whole world needs to be feng shui. So maybe when Jen is here, she's very good at structuring. And you can tell from her website and from her, uh, yeah, she's good at this stuff. So she'll help me come up with like a way to structure this. And then I'll just do the course because you guys have been asking for years. And just like the Thanksgiving recipe book had to happen because it just needed to come through. So does the feng shui course. Vital errands only in Louisiana. Oh, Lord, don't get me started. <laughs> I may lose some of you. I may lose some of you. Oh. The, the devastation that it's causing is so much worse than what they're saying, the devastation they're doing it to prevent us from. You can quote me on that. <laughs> it's so not okay. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, and it will not last, and hopefully it will not last, and you will be free in Louisiana. Um, do you need tips of what to do with yourself while you're on lockdown and how to um, make it better for yourself? Because I'm really an expert. It is my genius on how to make myself happy, and that could be on lockdown or not lockdown, traveling, not traveling, okay? So there's always beauty, the smell of the celery, um, the course is so needed. So Cass, what happens is with your, with your door, the door is only the guideline line to the front of the bagua. My bagua is downstairs. I drew one for you guys last time. Okay. So I'll take the cutting board. <laughs> I'm going to show you on the cutting board. Here's the bagua. The front door, let's say it's like this. This is the bagua. So Cass's front door is either here or to her bedroom. It could be to her bedroom or to her home. But at the doorway, it can be anywhere along this line. So that would mean that the far right is love. The far left is wealth. Here's fame. And career is in the middle. So if her um, door is here, that's fine. It's only a signifier to show how you're going to place the bagua standing at the door and hers will be here. And then um, that's how you would do it. So your doorway can be anywhere along here and it will not affect it. I hope that helps. Um, you guys are so sweet. There's plenty of people for you to connect with there. In fact, if any of you are moving or need friends in certain places based on your astro geography, um, I think I have a Facebook group we could do that on. I think it's really nice to be able to connect with people on the lines that are going to uplift you and support you. So for me, it's India, <laughs> anywhere in California. Um, all right, so now this is like brilliant and beautiful. If you are what you eat, then I'm going to be colorful, right? And we want to be colorful. We want to be live. We want to be fresh. Maybe we want to be a little crunchy. We want to have lycopene from the tomatoes. We want to have all the minerals and celery, vitamin K, vitamin D. I have, you know what I have that I didn't use is my cucumber. I feel very excited about cucumber, which is so cooling, hydrating, alkalizing, and... Um, I'm going to use the skin. Skin has nutrients. Oh, it smells so good. I really feel like if the world ate this way, it would be a much better place. And then everybody would get a colonic, and everybody would do their feng shui, and everybody would be kinder to each other and to the plant, to the animals, and to the earth. And remember, no matter what you believe, no matter what somebody believes, they have eyeballs and a heart and a soul. And they believe what they believe, 
is true and best and right. And we have to rise beyond, uh, like what Rumi said in his quote, there beyond all wrongdoing, right doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there, something like that. And Shaman Durek made this beautiful video of people just looking into the camera and their eyeballs. And it's like, just stare into somebody's eyes and you could see their sweet spirit. You could see souls, you could see beyond whatever is coming out of their mouths from their belief system. Isn't this just so good? So like, who needs the arugula that <laughs> didn't come in the bag that I ordered two hours ago to make sure I had something to make for this dinner, for this video? I was like, oh, I'll definitely either do the vegan Caesar salad because like that's, that's just as a pleaser. It just makes me happy every time the chewy dulse with the creamy. Now we're gonna make the creamy dressing. I forget what time, oh, we're at 30 minutes. I'm gonna zip it up. And if you have leftover, just don't dress it. Dress it, you know, only dress the part that you're gonna eat. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. We have everything in there. Raisins could be fun, maybe. Wow, Liz, your friend gave you um, two cucumbers today, organic. She grows for 30 years in the same ground. Like a uh, lamb that hasn't been raped of minerals is the very best. So, you know, even just sitting in an orange orchard that's been there forever, and then you can just eat those oranges that are so mineral rich, it's 10 times better than like, you know, really um, turned over oranges that have been turned over. Ojai has a lot of oranges. Florida has a lot of oranges. Okay, so I need my carafe. Um, I know this is a long video. I may have lost some of you, but this is dinner. Dinner in 30. I'm going to use the cashews that I had soaking. Notice I smell them always. I don't need a lot. And I got this Wonder Valley um, olive oil, which is so fresh and so fabulous, Wonder Valley. I can't speak highly enough, a titch. We're gonna put a, a garlic clove in because I'm gonna keep away the vampires <laughs> or turn into one or turn into a wolf. I don't know what's gonna happen. I have this lemon that was sitting in my refrigerator. I love, one thing we're celebrating that it feels so good when you use all of your produce, when nothing goes to waste and you just feel like, yeah, I used it all, tomorrow I'm gonna go and do food shopping and it's gonna feel very European. Like you just go for the day, get what you need for that day. That's really how I like to do it. Yeah, it's such a good feeling. You feel so proud of yourself. Like, oh, I have no lemons yet left. I used all my everything. I could zest the lemon. I could use the lemon and do what my mom did, and she put it on the stove, on, this, on a saucepan, and heated it up and made the smell go throughout the house. A little more salt. And this one, you know, let's use the rest of the cashews. Yeah, you're good. You always gotta check, like, your nose knows. And when in doubt, throw it out and just use olive oil. And this could be, if you didn't have a blender um, and you didn't feel like soaking and blending cashews, which cashews do not need to be soaked. Cashews are not raw, they're never raw. Cashews are never raw because in order to get them out, um, they have to be boiled. Like they they boil the, the seed, the, the nut to get them out. It's a whole thing, cashew apples with the, it's a, it's a really cool process, but it's not something that they're ever raw. So they're not gonna sprout and they're soft and creamy enough. Soaking them makes them a little softer and a little creamier quicker. But if you have a high performance blender, it's gonna do it anyway. Um, but if you didn't have this situation, then you could get something like Kite Hill ricotta or Kite Hill almond cream cheese or some kind of like vegan cheese. And if you want something creamy, then you just mix a little olive oil, a little spices, and you can have that. Um, I'm going to do black pepper because I'm a big black pepper fan. And we could use turmeric. We can make this like 
a lot of pepper. Yeah, celery makes you crave, whatever you have in the morning makes you crave uh, differently throughout the day. So if you have celery first thing, you crave like, I crave apples, it's really weird. Um, but I definitely crave raw food. So now what? What do you want in there? What spices? Does anybody have any suggestions? Let's hear it. I have so many cool spices, really. Dill. I think dill. I don't have fresh dill. I have this dill. And that is going to make me happy. I think I do. A garlic dill. And I have chives outside if I felt like going to grab them, which I do. And these could be folded in after I blend it because then um, and then we're going to blend you live near your Jupiter descending line congratulations seriously congratulations on that because that's just a very uplifting line in the form of someone else Oh, you're losing connection? Sorry. The beach is, I count, it's like seven blocks, six blocks. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It, you can't, I don't know if you can see the little flecks of green. And then I'm going to have the um, chives. This is gorgeous. This could be a great dip for like just carrots and celery. Let's say you want to go watch a movie and you need a healthy snack, cut up carrots, cut up celery, and then have, or maybe even some little chippy things. And then you just have, um, that's a windy, it's a, a limpy carrot. Do I soak my nuts in the counter? Yes, I don't soak them in the fridge. If I don't use them right away, after eight hours, let's say almonds, I rinse, drain them, and then stick them in the fridge and can use them the next day. Oh, yeah. They're so good, Tim. Mm-hmm. It's garlicky. It's dilly. It's not blended all the way, but I actually like it. I could blend it a little more, and I could use a little more salt. I definitely can use, I like salty. And then I like a hot tonic for dessert, and we're good. What did Tim say to do? The dressing, my dear Anna, soaked cashews or cashews, uh, water, olive oil, salt, Organic dill, dried dill, fresh garlic, one clove of garlic, um, olive oil, lemon. There's quite a bit of lemon in it. Okay, let's blend it one more time. And we're going to have um, chop this, and that's dinner. That's going to be dinner. And then I'm going to add a cute snack. I'm laughing. My friend Vicky was like, you got to watch this doctor, da, 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 on Netflix. And so last night I went to go turn it on. And I'm like, oh, I remember that show. I had to stop watching it after a season because it gave me too much anxiety. I have to watch things like The Good Place or, um, you know, Grace and Frankie. Grace, Frankie and Grace. Grace and Frankie. Like, I have to watch, like, happy things or I get stressed. Super sensitive. Are you guys that way? Yeah, this is kind of ranchy. You're right. <laughs> if we're going to label it, Jessica Rose. Yeah. So it got a little more watery, and it might need a little more flavor, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be super. It's amazing. I knew it. I'm happy. 
The reason you need a lot of lemon with cashews is because they're sweet, they're creamy and they're sweet. So you, unless you're making like a, a dessert with cashews, then you want the lemon to cut the sweetness. I'm really excited about this, I'm so excited. So it's really good that the arugula and romaine didn't come because I used everything in my refrigerator. I have some celery for the morning. And um, and really, to really, this is gonna, if I dress this and I still want to have it tomorrow, it's gonna be fine. But and this is not really fatty because it's very watery. I'm gonna sprinkle the chives. And there is our dinner, voila. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah, I can't watch bad news. I can't watch nervous, like even psychological things that make me have anxiety. No. I have my own peaceful, happy world. <laughs> it's like, to put it mildly, I have my own magic bubble. Um, you know, my mom used to be like, you don't watch the news, you're living under a rock. And I'd be like, yes. But if you notice my rock, it's really happy under here. It's very like, it's like hollowed out and there's like chandeliers and candles and roses and there's like good food and, um, you know, there's, there's just not stressors in my own environment that I can help, right? Like there's stressors in life, stuff happens. You walk out the doors, you, you could pick up on energies, but in your own oasis, in your own, under your own rock, and you, you get to choose what comes in. And so you really want to make sure that it's like this, you know, what you hear, what you watch, you guys know this, that what you watch, the words, who you communicate with, and, and, and it's really, really good to almost have energetic earplugs in right now because some people are just spewing a lot of their anger. So that's more toxic than eating some kind of weird donut, you know, or because like food you can get to leave your body where it's sometimes lodged. So we really want to, if somebody's kind of aggressive, you can block them and energetically, physically, you know, like don't, don't entertain that. Um, choose wisely. So news fast for, I've been like that for years. I, I know what I need to know for some reason, what I need to know comes to me and that's, that's fine. So Crystal, we got roller girl here. So gorgeous little salad. We have a raw food dinner. I'm excited to go draw and maybe watch something fun on Netflix. Yeah, you can pick up stress energy from people with COVID. It's it's out there for sure. So I'm not going to say it's not, but um, yeah, cancer sign. I have a cancer moon and I'm definitely empathic and sensitive. So it is possible to survive and thrive at this time. You just have to like pump up the volume with the things that make you feel good. Walk extra steps a day, get out into nature, make the raw food, drink the tonics, commune with your lovies on Zoom or however. I think it's really important. Oh, Gordon Lightfoot Doc, thank you for that. Um, so you guys talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to just clean up and I'm going to enjoy this. I think I even want a little bit of avocado on it because the avocado came, I believe, ripe. Let's see. One came hard as a rock and oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's so exciting. You can feel my energy to Houston. I kind of want to go to Texas and I kind of want to go to Northern California and I kind of want a vehicle I can roll around in with my own down comforter and my own tonic ingredients and my own green powders and a whole huge bag of apples, a big refrigerator filled with kale and celery. And that's what I want. So I think I'm going to manifest that. And then wouldn't that be fun if I came to a town near you? My fantasy is that I just travel around and then I could be like, okay, hey, you guys, I'm in Houston, I'm in Sedona, who wants me to come check out what's going on feng shui-wise at their house? <laughs> I think the whole world will start, all of our followers and family will start cleaning up. If you knew I was coming over, you might be, so I used to tell people in More With Dara, on my membership site, I'm like, just pretend I'm coming. I might show up, you never know. Um, <laughs> I'm coming over. Anyway, um, 
pop-ups, like where I just pop in, a pop-up pop in, like where I just pop in. And I'm like, here's a tonic. Let's take a look at what's going on here. <laughs> I tell you what to do, then I leave. And then I can visit again to see your, your, um, a food truck would be so fun. Like tonics, I would have, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Like this is what I found at the market. This is what we're serving today. Um, yeah, Houston. Can you imagine like I just show up in like my own like RV thing? And um, that's why I think I need something kind of big enough. But I don't know. If anyone hears of one for sale, I'm open. I'm open. If the right thing magically appears and the universe invites me, I will do it. And that's easy for me to make tonics. Can you imagine a tonic truck? It would be so fun. I know. So, Mandida, I love you guys. Is there anything else you want to say? I don't want to hang up. I don't want to hang up real quick. Um, because of me last year, Liz cleaned out her wardrobe big time. It was wonderful. A huge clear out. It's the best feeling. The universe is hearing me. It's going to happen. Like if someone magically appeared and said, here's this, it's this much, I'd be like, okay, bought, sold, and I'd clean it out and then I would fill it up yeah I think it's gonna happen so if anybody knows of anybody tonic shop would be fantastic all right I'm not gonna clean up while we're on the phone unless you want me to <laughs> I probably lost some of you might be late where you are we went on and on but because I think it doesn't matter for our hangout but like when the video has been recorded and it's up on YouTube and somebody might look at it and be like, this is an hour long, I'm not gonna watch it. Whereas if it's short, people with short attention spans are going to um, really not watch. Um, but I don't really have to care because we're hanging out, we're having fun. It feels so good to clean your house, doesn't it? I wasn't gonna make food because my house is clean, but I'm like, no. Oh, it's like Tonic Tuesdays. An hour heartwarming. That's so nice. Anna, I don't usually talk about what do I recommend in the next week's based on astrology. I don't talk about transits a lot. There's experts for that. I would look at Bracha Goldsmith and I would, I like to know the psychology of the basics, the birth chart. I like to know the North Node, the North Node house placement. I like you to know your astro, astro geography and really get familiar with your unmovable things, things that stay the same always, and then pay attention to transits. But for the most part, we all know, or most of us know that Mercury is in retrograde and it's a planet of communication. So that's technology communication. Uh, misunderstandings can happen during Mercury retrograde. Like, oh, I showed up at one, where are you? Oh, I thought you said three. No, I said one. Um, or contracts, end up being torn up or have to be revisited really really good time right now if you're planning on it's funny that i released an ebook during mercury retrograde like so what but it's normally the time to go over and to go re-over things to catch spelling mistakes which i did today um to really fine tooth things and communicate really clearly and to make a plan and to revisit old things that you've done to go back over your work before you push things forward. That's kind of what you can do now. My kitchen is great energy. My kitchen is not new. It's old. The cabinets are yellowed and I feel so in love with my kitchen still. Like it definitely needs to be replaced. Some of the stuff going on, but I have so much gratitude for this kitchen because so much love and fun has happened here. Like this is where I met my friend Jenna. This is where, this is why I know my friend Lisa. This kitchen is why I know you guys. Like this kitchen is where it all started, right? I was a jewelry designer in the studio in the back, but there was something magic about this kitchen. So I don't really want to replace my table that's marked up with love and scratches. And I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, that cabinet over there looks like somebody clawed at it. <laughs> so, but one day I'll, I'll fix it up a little bit with great love. But I think when you, when you love something so much and you feel so grateful for it, the shabbiness of it 
kind of adds to its charm. It's like, wow, this was really used. You know, how much better is that? A kitchen that's been well loved, used, fed people, and then a perfectly perfect marble kitchen that doesn't get that like use. That's not, yeah, I would love a used old kitchen any day. <laughs> It's a functional kitchen. It is a highly functioning, a bit messy, um, a bit chaotic at the moment, but a feel-good kitchen. Yeah, I love my kitchen with a passion. And I'm sure I could love it so much more, you know, when I'd redo the cabinets. Sure. But I was thinking about different colors and blue at the bottom. And then I was like, no, today it hit me. I'm like, it's going to be all white because that's what I like. So a kitchen that has a lot of love made in it and served in it is the kitchen. That's the kitchen. So I just love you guys. You love my kitchen with a passion. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, I don't know, there's something about it that's just like, it's the place. It's the place. So I'm happy to say that the recipe book got me, you guys got me making food again because I decided to make videos and I'm making more food. And then the recipe book really got me in. Like I've been doing all kinds of things. So it's good. There's a lot of memories here. You're right. Hi, I'm Ventura. It's so many. You're an OG. There's so many memories and silly moments and mistake moments and guests in here like Romania and guests like the two guys who came and there was like an explosion of green soup everywhere. There was two guys with beards. I don't even know why they were here or who they were. <laughs> Dan the man, right? He calls it the raw food. I just thought of him earlier when I was like, you got to eat the raw food. Um, Dan the man, the life regenerator. There's just the raw bras and Penny Shelton and um, we could go on and on. Uh, Mitch, the young cameraman, and then I had my assistant Gage, and then there was Jada, who appeared from time to time, and yep, Gage, very good. Ooh. So we've had, um, we had Matt Monarch here, we've had, I don't know if David Wolf, he's been in my kitchen, I don't know if he was on video, but there's been so many, Marcus Rothkrantz, the rotographer, um, Yeah, I've seen Dan the Man speak. The cute handyman. Was that Howie? Did you think Howie was cute? Howie, you remember Howie was helping me in the time I went um, low fat, raw, vegan, only fruit for 30 days. And Jada's beautiful. Thank you, like her mother. Thank you. Oh, Tim Robbins' son. Oh, good memory. Yes. Um, Archer. You guys are good. We got some, we got, you guys are good. We can have, you can have like a, a giveaway for the people who remember. Like I could ask them, you remember things I don't remember. But yes, Jack, Jack Robbins, who is beautiful and talented. And the, that kale chip recipe, when he tasted my kale chips at his dad's house, because I was a private chef for Tim, he was like, whoa, I could be raw. I, I want to be raw. These are like crack. Literally, the kale, the kale, in the kale chip recipe, some of those comments that were at the top were comments that Jack said about my kale chips. And he learned how to make the kale chips from, I think we made ginger tea in that video. So he learned how to make the kale chips. That kale chip recipe which I just sent a huge bag. My daughter and her dad were flying somewhere and they said we ate the whole bag like within minutes. So that kale chip recipe is in the recipe book that just came out yesterday. Herbie's great. Herbie calls me every evening. He wants to hear my voice before he goes to sleep. He's in Florida, he's happy, he's well taken care of. You know what? I need to get more flowers. I used to have tons of flowers and tons of fruit. Maybe we'll do, I've been thinking about that. Fully raw Christina. Oh my gosh. Nisha. <laughs> yes. And she's beautiful and doing well. And um, yeah. And Herbie, Herbie for sure. Herbie the love bug as he calls himself. And Dr. Elizabeth. Oh my gosh. I feel like we're missing some, but more to come. We can do videos again. I'm well lit. 
We've got the camera. Yeah, Herbie's happy. I gotta eat, you guys. I love you. I have to clean up because, like, when I have a mess, I get like obsessive. I wish I could turn the camera so I could clean up at the same time. <laughs> this stream is very chill, Alpha Set. It's super chill. Did she get married? I thought she was just living with him. I don't know if she actually got married. But yes, yeah, she's in love. Okay, Desi's letting me go. Bye. I don't want to hang up. Karen, um, any correlation? My north node is in Virgo. And it turns out all three of my longest standing best friends have Virgo ascendant. Yes. it's Well, it's not a coincidence. It's a correlation that your soul wants to surround itself with people who are of your north node countenance. So you would want to be with a Virgo sun, Virgo moon, even Virgo rising, definitely to learn the ways of the Virgo. You want to learn the ways of your north node. So if anybody has a Taurus north node, learn my ways. If anybody, but the thing is when you're doing your north node, when I'm doing my Taurus thing, it appeals to everybody. When you're doing your north node, you're sparkling and you're reminding others that, yeah, we need to enjoy the bounty of the earth. And so when you're doing yours, an Aries north node is doing her thing. You're like, ah, or his thing. I got to speak my mind. I have to be more impulsive. I need to take action. So it's really cool to watch anybody, but if, but especially if you're really having a hard time or you need to um, be more into your North Node than being near someone who is a proper expression of that sign. Oh, Cameron's letting you too. You know I don't want to hang up. We love vegans. We love everybody, no matter what they eat, but particularly are more in tune with people who eat the raw food, as Dan would say. So if anybody's following Dan, go tell him I said hi. Um, this was a fun live. Thank you. I'm going to take my picture. <laughs> I'm going to take my picture. I'm wearing, um, this is from Bands of LA, and it turned out really handy because um, I had clipped my mic onto my slip, which was pulling it down. I'm like, no, 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 I got to have a belt to clip the mic on. So um, it kind of goes with my Paris bowl, right? I will take a picture, and it will be on Instagram and a thumbnail. And I love you guys, and I will see you super soon. Bye. Aww.